Hi everybody, welcome to session 6.4. We're talking about presentations. Uh, I just want to give you the preface that this is something near and dear to my heart. Some of my favorite moments professionally have involved presentations I've made in some form or another. And it continues to be this case as part of the why I love teaching. This is just something I really enjoy. And so knowing that you might think that I'm going to lay down a long list of really intricate detailed advice and that's actually not the case i intend to keep it relatively brief the reason it, it, because actually great speaking is brief we'll talk about purpose as it relates to know feel and do um, we'll talk about bill ba bill baker's concepts of message media messenger and then the idea of practice um, before we get to that i do want to make some observations um, you know if you stop to think about it. We've all spent our lives speaking far more than writing. Although we've spent the semester up till now talking primarily about writing, the truth is we have a lot more practice speaking with people. Uh, you know, speaking is in fact what we do more of, if, not just in general, but every day. Um, friends, roommates, classmates, professors, uh, family members, loved ones, um, bosses. We spend time speaking far more than we do writing. In spite of this practice that we've had over decades, speaking still makes us nervous, which if you stop to think might seem a little odd. I mean, if we spend most of our lives speaking, then why does speaking make us nervous? And I'll tell you the reasons I think that's what, that's the case. Um, first of all, speaking is momentary. Now, by momentary, I don't really mean like temporary, um, although that's true. I want to emphasize the moment part of momentary. That is to say, you get one shot when you speak. You don't get to practice or try again. You get one chance. And that feeling can be really intimidating. You get this one moment fixed in time that will be remembered for good or ill forever. And, uh, you know, that's not the case with writing. With writing, you can rewrite and craft and refine until you feel comfortable sending it out. Speaking, you just get one shot. It's fixed in time the moment the words come out of your mouth. Speaking is also very present, which means you don't have barriers between you to help you feel comfortable. When you speak, you're up there in front of, of the people you're speaking to. Um, that's not the case with writing. Writing is something that usually involves distance. Uh, when somebody reads what you wrote, they're typically not there. Now, sometimes they are. And if you've ever noticed, when you hand your paper over to someone else to have them read it and give you feedback, it's that's a nerve-wracking moment, right? And it's for the same reason. It's very present. You're there with them as they're experiencing what you wrote, and it's a totally different thing than writing something and sending it off where you don't have to be there for the moment when they write it. And so that presence in the moment matters a lot. And, and the reason it matters is because finally speaking is also very personal. Um, you know, we, we take it as judgment on our character when people hear what we say. It's like a window into your soul every time you say something. And uh, we take very personally the way people think about us based on what we're saying. And I, th and I think that's another reason this is hard. Um, now, I hope I haven't scared you off entirely. I think the truth is understanding why this is a fearful thing is, is helpful to being better at it. Um, I will say this, you know, I, I don't think the best speakers always have superior skill. Uh, I've encountered some really awesome speakers who are not the way, who don't speak in the way you typically see um, advised by people who are, you know, professional speakers. Um, there are a lot of people that use a lot of ums or ands that seem to, uh, you know, that aren't great at eye contact, that uh, maybe didn't dress as well as they could. Now, don't get me wrong, it's important to, to avoid those sorts of things if you can. But I've been riveted by speakers that don't have the, um, sort of the prototypical attributes, you know, the charisma of, uh, that we think of when we, th when we think of excellent speakers. The truth is that the best speakers just have something better to say. They, they have something really important for everybody to know. And they've thought about it enough and crafted it enough and paid enough attention to it that when they tell you, they're telling you in the best way they can. And so it's more about the message than it is about um, all these little weird tips and tricks and so forth. Now, don't get me wrong. Those tips are really important. In fact, I encourage you to go to the Baker text because he gives great advice about eye contact, about hand movements. But, but all that advice really centers on this is how you deliver the thing you have to say. Um, and, and when you have something important to say, speaking is so much easier because, because the confidence of the message carries you through. 
So I want you to remember that as uh, you prepare all of the presentations you'll be giving throughout your program um, for the next couple years. Okay, let's talk about purpose. Uh, you know that I'm very big on purpose, that we should always be thinking about purpose behind everything we do. That's why we watched Objectified at the beginning of the semester. I, you know, I think we too often get distracted away from the core purposes of, of what we're trying to accomplish, and that's definitely true with speaking. People forget purpose all the time. And anytime you're speaking to somebody, especially in the case of giving presentations like in class or at work, there are three things you want to happen. You want them to know something, to feel something, and to do something as a result. Um, so let's talk about this idea of knowing something. This is the easy part, and this is what we usually think of when we think of speaking, is that you're conveying information, data, reasons, risks, challenges, processes, plans. The point is, is you have to put information into their head. That's part of your purpose, but it certainly isn't the whole one. Um, it, and, and when you realize, however, that, that having them know something is, is part of your purpose, then it makes you craft the information so that they can better understand it. The goal isn't just putting the information out there. The goal is getting the information into their heads in a way that they can understand. That's what knowing means. It doesn't mean hearing. And I think that's one of the mistakes people make when they give presentations is they assume that information shared is information understood. And that's not true. You have to be sensitive to how what it takes for them to know. Um, you know, and this is what this is what teaching is all about. This is what any presentation you'd give your boss is all about, or to a professor. Um, the truth is, this is your life. Anytime you're communicating, you want them to know. You just don't want it. It's not that you just need to say it. You need them to know it. With knowledge comes feelings. I think too often we pretend that feelings aren't important, especially in organizational settings. Um, the irony, of course, is that we feel things all the time and make decisions based on feeling at work. And, and so I want you to consider the feeling and the message you're trying to make. This is, again, part of the purpose. Do you want them to feel confidence, trust, enthusiasm, empathy, resolve, patience? What do you want them to feel based on this encounter? Um, because that's part of the goal. The knowledge will, may not be sufficient. You have to also convey it in a way that gets the right feeling. Um, some people are just naturally very good at this. Other people need to deliberate. But the point is, is it always happens. And here's the thing. No matter what you do, they'll feel something. So you're better off tailoring the feeling that they feel with your approach rather than just hoping that they feel the right thing. And lastly, you want them to do something. Uh, you want a good grade from your professor. You want um, your boss to go along with your proposal. You want your roommate to stop leaving dishes in the sink. Whatever it is, you want them to do something, whether it's continuing a course of action, forbearing from a course of action, deciding, giving something, joining a group, making a change, whatever it is, you want them to do something when you talk to them. And so really every message has this purpose of know, feel, and do. Anytime you speak, you're, that's what's going on, is you want them to know, feel, and do. Even if it's a two-minute conversation, that's the result. And so if you're preparing for any sort of presentation, I encourage you to take this approach. Have this be the thing you write down on a piece of paper. Ask yourself, what do I want them to know? What do I want them to feel? What do I want them to do? Keep that in front of you as you prepare, because that will help you get the message across that you need to get across. Just focus on purpose. Everything else will follow. It really will. Focus on purpose. Okay, let's talk about me message, media, and messenger. Actually, I'm not going to talk about media because that's what our class session on Thursday is for. We'll talk about message and messenger, however, though. Um, these are really great insights from the Baker text. I encourage you to dig into that chapter, read it in detail, because he gives all kinds of great advice. Regarding message, I'm going to give you three tips from me, and you can sort of add these to all the great all the great things that, that the Baker text talks about. First of all, make sure you tell them where you're taking them. Um, people don't like leaving on a journey where they don't know where they're going, and that's what happens when you speak. You're taking them on some sort of journey. You don't have to lay it all out ahead of time. That's what the that's what your presentation is for, but you do need to give them a sense. You need to give them a roadmap or an idea so they know what to expect. Um, you know, OABC is a great format. It should be sort of your default reaction in any setting, um, any presentation. You should decide about what your opening, your agenda, your body, and closing will be. And make sure you emphasize that A part of the acronym that you give them that agenda. I think another great piece of advice is to be brief. Um, 
you know, there are too many presentations people give, too many comments people make at church, too many sacrament meeting talks, too many um, comments people make uh, in class at school that just take forever. And being brief is always a better way to get focus, to get people listening, and to keep them happy. You have all felt it. And so reciprocate that feeling, reciprocate or give back to the people around you um, by being brief. Finally, you know, uh, we love stories. People love stories. In fact, we've been telling stories for, for as long as people have lived on the earth. And um, you can make anything a story. You don't have to tell a fiction about a person to have a story. Um, for example, you might be giving a presentation on a new program that you want to present. Well, that program can be a story. You can explain the setup. You can describe in detail the conflict that requires the program. You can, you can sort of give a vision of the resolution that the program would lead to and then, and then finalize it with this message, this message of, okay, you've heard this story, now here's what you do with it. Um, it you know, all of the great things that we enjoy, movies, films, books, um, you know, the people we like to be with, uh, th there's a common element there which I think is storytelling. It's just uh, something that's innately human, and you can tell a story with almost anything. So just those three tips, I think everything gets better when you, when you follow those three pieces of advice. I'll tell you something about Messenger. Um, go read the Baker text. Now, I have these pictures up here because these are people that look like great messengers. They're well-dressed. They're warm and friendly-looking. Uh, they seem engaged in me and not themselves. Um, you know, if you think about it, a messenger is always there for somebody else, not for themselves. And uh, that that should be your focus and goal. Uh, so go dig into the Baker book on all of the, his tips on being a messenger, about hand gestures, about your appearance. Um, he gives really good advice, and I don't have to regurgitate it here. So, so the last point I have to make is about practice. Um, and it's really simple. You have to practice. You remember at the beginning of this um, recording, I told you that um, speaking is momentary. Um, it's temporary. You just have one shot at it. Um, this is the reason you practice. And, and you can practice in all kinds of ways. You can practice by doing it in front of the mirror, in front of somebody you trust and love, reciting in your head throughout the day, making outlines, and, and then speaking through your outlines. Um, but you really do need to practice. Get the right turn of phrase for the right moment. Get your hand gestures looking the way you want them to. Get the eye contact that you need for the right moment. Um, every time you practice, make sure you focus on your purpose. And so your practice is, is purpose-driven. But you really do need to practice. There will come time. You'll get better at it with time. You get better at speaking as you, the more you do it. But even then, you really need to rehearse and practice, especially when it's really important. Um, you know, uh, there have been some really excellent speakers o over the centuries, and uh, I think all of them had the habit of just rehearsing, just rehearsing, rehearsing constantly. So anyway, you need to practice. So do it in front of a mirror somewhere, but you need to do it. Okay, so that's it. Um, I want you to come to class tomorrow with something you wish everyone knew. Um, I'm going to invite some of you up to tell us these, this thing that you wish everyone knew. And then we're going to evaluate how to make that presentation most effective with um, the no feel do idea, with some of the other tips that come from the Baker text and from this presentation. Um, this will be the essence of the presentations that you'll give in, in uh, the assignment that's due next week. We'll give more detail on that tomorrow in class. And I look forward to seeing you all.